Hey guys, and welcome back. Today, we're going to continue with our exploration of Microsoft Fabric. Today, we're going to take a look at one of the core components to Microsoft Fabric, which is Microsoft OneLake. So what is Microsoft OneLake? Microsoft OneLake is the foundation for Microsoft Fabric. OneLake is a single unified logical data lake that is provisioned as part of your Microsoft Fabric environment and it is meant to be shared by your entire organization. It is designed to simplify collaboration and to eliminate data silos within your organization. Every tenant that has enabled Microsoft Fabric will have one one lake storage service. You can never have more than one and you can never have less than one. Microsoft One Lake is designed to do for analytics data, the same thing that OneDrive did for Office documents data. So all of this sounds good, but why do we actually need One Lake? Well, One Lake is meant to eliminate a lot of challenges that many organizations face today. So for example, in many organizations, you often see that they have a data warehouse that is created to be the single source of truth for their data systems. And they may utilize their data warehouse to power their reports and dashboards. However, these data warehouses are designed for managing relational structured data, and they are not ideal for working with unstructured data such as images or audio files. This, among other reasons, is what contributed to the growth and popularity of data lakes, as data lakes are designed to have a massive scale and are able to accommodate both structured data and unstructured data. But this led to even more challenges, as organizations now had data silos within their organization. Organizations will commonly find themselves having to copy data from the data warehouse to the data lake or from the data lake back into the data warehouse. This also made it challenging for different data personas, such as a data analyst, that may be more comfortable utilizing a data warehouse and working with the T-SQL language to build out reports and dashboards, whereas the data scientists may need to work more from the data lake because they're using Python language and working more with audio files or images files. With Microsoft One Lake, organizations can store all of their data, structured and unstructured data, within the One Lake, eliminating the data silos and eliminating the need for you to have to copy data between your warehouse and the data lake. Now, all of your different data personas from your data engineers to your data analysts to the data scientists can all work from the same data inside of One Lake, taking advantage of of only having one copy of the data and utilizing the analytical engine of their choosing. By default, Fabric workloads such as warehouses and lake houses will all store their data within one lake as Delta Parquet files. So how does one lake organize its data? So data that is inside of Microsoft one lake is organized into workspaces. Workspaces are logical containers that are used to house your fabric artifacts and are also used to control ownership and access to the data that is within those actual workspaces. Each workspace that you have is tied to a fabric capacity. Capacities are used to map your artifacts to a particular Azure region, and it is also used to control your capacity limits and your billing. So how can you access OneLake? Well, we already talked about how Microsoft OneLake is natively integrated with Microsoft Fabric. So all of your Fabric workloads will utilize OneLake as their default data store. In addition to this, OneLake is built on top of Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2. So the same set of APIs and SDKs that you commonly use today with ADLS will also work with Microsoft OneLake. This also means that existing applications such as Azure Databricks, Synapse Analytics, HD Insight, or the Azure Storage Explorer can all access and work with Microsoft OneLake. There is also a One Lake for File Explorer for Windows that enables you to interact with your analytics data just as you would with OneDrive data. So lastly, let's take a look at shortcuts. So what are shortcuts? So not only does Microsoft One Lake aim to be the one location for your organization to store all of its analytics data, but it also aims to be the first multi-cloud data lake. This is accomplished by utilizing something which is called shortcuts. A shortcut is a reference to data that is stored in other locations. It could be data in another workspace, data that is external to one lake and stored inside of an Azure data lake, 
or it could be data that is stored inside of another cloud provider such as AWS or Google Cloud. Once the shortcut has been created, the link will make that data appear as if it is natively stored inside of Microsoft One Lake without the need for you to have to physically copy that data. So let's go out to the Fabric portal now so that we can take a look at how Microsoft One Lake works in action. So we are logged in now to the Fabric portal now and the first thing that we need to do is to create ourselves a new workspace so that we can then create new artifacts. So remember back during the presentation portion, we mentioned how workspaces are tied to capacities and capacities is the way that you're going to control what particular region your data is stored in. So to start off, let's go out to the Azure portal now and we're going to create two new capacities, one capacity in the South Central US region and one capacity in the West US region. So. I'm logged in now to the Azure portal now, and we're going to start off here just by creating ourselves a new capacity here. So I'm going to create a new resource group, and I will call this One Lake Demo RG. And my capacity name, I will call this SCUS for South Central US Capacity. And we are going to place this in South Central US. And I'm just going to choose a F2 SKU for right now. And then I will review and create. And then we will wait on this to complete. And in the meanwhile, I'm going to repeat the same process but this time create myself a workspace that is tied to the West US region. All right, so that is all done now. So as we can see now, we have two capacities now. We have one that is in the South Central US region and one that is in the West US region. So now I'm going to jump back over to the Fabric portal now and I need to create myself two new workspaces, one that is each tied to the two capacities that we just built out. So to start this process off, I'm just going to pick any one of these really quick and I'm going to come down to workspaces and then I'm going to create a new workspace so this first workspace here let's just call this South Central US workspace and then I'm going to click on the advanced tab here and then this is where you are going to choose the capacity option right here and then I can choose my actual capacity here. So since this one is for South Central US, we'll choose that one and then we'll click apply. And now we have our new workspace here created. So I'm just going to run through this process one more time so that we can create our workspace for West US. So WUS workspace, click advanced, my capacity, then I will choose West US capacity. All right, and if we come back over here to workspaces, we can see now our two new workspaces that we have here, South Central US workspace and West US workspace. Now, for majority of the work that we are going to be doing here today, we're going to be working out of the South Central US workspace, but we do need to create some data in the West US workspace here first. So I'm gonna jump into this workspace and I'm gonna change over to the data warehouse persona here and I'm just going to create a warehouse really quick and then create one table for it so as we all know the fabric product is still in preview here so um, I'm getting a message here that is telling me that I don't have permissions to create this item within my workspace so we know that we already went out and created a capacity for it so I think that what we're looking at here may just be a bug that needs to be addressed but to get past this what I'm going to do is let's just call this West US workspace and let's just call it workspace two. And then it creates a new workspace for me and it's going to utilize the trial option here for me. So that is okay for this particular example. So let's just call this West US warehouse. All right, so our warehouse is up and running now. So I'm just going to create myself a new table here using T-SQL. And I will just call this table, let's just call it my first table. 
and I'm going to give it one column called name and actually let's just call this number and then we'll leave this as an int not null and we can go ahead and create our first table and then I'm just going to modify this just a little bit so we're going to insert values one and that should be good all right so now in my west us workspace we have one data warehouse with one table in one row so what i'm going to do now is jump back over to our south central us workspace and we're going to create some objects here so that we can kind of see how one lake stores that actual data and manages that actual data so to start things off let's just do new and i'm going to create myself a new lake house and once again we're getting that same message here so let me just do south us workspace 2 and then it's going to upgrade this to the trial capacity which is fine and then I'm going to name my lake house South Central US Lake House. All right, so now my lake house is up and running here. Now, we won't get into too many details here as this particular video is not about the lake house, but it's about one lake. So to kind of run through this really quick, I'm just gonna come down here to the file section and I'm going to upload some data here for us to work with. So let me browse my local system here and I'm gonna use this, actually I'll use this orders data here that I have. So I'm just gonna upload my orders data and we can see that that worked just fine with no issues. I'm just going to refresh this really quick and we can see my orders data right here. Then I'm just going to click on this little ellipsis right here and then I'm going to load this data into a new table that is going to be stored within my lake house here just so we have ourselves some lake house data that we can view later on inside of one lake all right so as we see right here now we have a new table here called orders and we could actually create ourselves a new notebook so that we can view this data and see what it looks like. So let me just say we want to load this data to Spark. It's going to create a new data frame for us. And then I can run this data frame so that we can view the data that is stored within our orders table here using PySpark. And just like that, we can see all of my order data listed here. So this is all that we're going to need to do for our lake house. So I'm going to come back into the data warehouse persona here and we're going to create ourselves a new warehouse. So I will call this SCUS warehouse and we will go ahead and create this warehouse. All right, so we have our warehouse here. So what I want to do here is I want to open up a new SQL query window and I'm going to come out to my hard drive here and I have a script here for me to create some data warehouse table. So I'm just going to copy the contents from that script. And then I'm going to paste these contents here. And then I am going to execute my script. All right, so it looks like our script ran. So I'm gonna come down to the schema section, the DBO, and then we should see our new tables listed right here. So if I wanted to look at my customer data, I can click right here and as you can see we have some sample customer data here also our date data product data and sales order data here all right so the next thing that i want to do is introduce you guys to the one lake data hub so if you look over here to the far left you see this little icon right here for the one lake data hub so the data hub is going to give you the ability for you to kind of find and explore all of the different resources that you have inside of one lake. Now, one thing to note here is that you're going to get the ability to see all of the data that you have access to for your entire organization. If you only want to see the data that you created, you can click on the my data tab right here. So from this one lake data hub view, we can see what particular workspace our data sets belongs to. 
we can see the last time that the data has been refreshed. We can see if a particular artifact here has a endorsement, which could be something like certified data. And we can see sensitivity labels for it here so that you can properly classify things such as PII data. So as you can see from this view here, the One Lake Data Hub is a great way just for you to kind of explore and view the data that you have access to that is stored inside of Microsoft One Lake. Now there is one more option that you can utilize for exploring your data. And I'm gonna open up a new tab here. And that other option is for you to download and install the One Lake File Explorer tool for Windows. This tool is going to create a shortcut for you inside of the file explorer tool so that you can browse through your one leg data just as you do today with OneDrive data so I have already installed this so if I open up my file explorer tool here we'll see that right down here we have this new option here called one leg and as we can see here we can see that I have access here to my individual workspaces. So the workspaces that we have been working with is this West US workspace 2 and the South Central US workspace 2. So let's go into our West US workspace and as we can see at the next layer here everything is broken down based on the artifact type. So the only thing that we created inside of West US was a warehouse. So we can open up the folder here and then we have options here for files, tables, and some system information here. So if we explore the tables section here, schema section comes first and then the table name. And now we can see my actual table data here. So remember back during the presentation session, we said that all of your data will be stored inside of one lake as a Delta Parquet file. So this folder right here is going to contain our Parquet file here. And then if we go back up one layer, we can see that we have our Delta folder here, which has a set of JSON files, which is gonna be our Delta log files here. So this is our data that we have here for our West US workspace. And if I come back and look, in, and look at the South Central US workspace, then once again here, we can see that we have that warehouse folder here and we also have our lake house folder. So once again, we can just navigate down through our actual warehouse and then you will see the tables here that we had created through our T-SQL script. So once again, you can look at these, you can view the actual parquet files that are here and the actual Delta data here. Then if I come back, we can do this once again for our lake houses. So remember we uploaded first that orders file. So we can see that particular file listed right here, but then we took that file and created a new table. And that table is once again going to be stored here. So we see our parquet file here and then our Delta log folder here once again. So installing this shortcut here is a great, great way just for you to kind of go out and explore your data so that you can see the files that are there that actually comprises that actual data. The other great thing about this is that since the Delta Parquet format is a open format, you can actually utilize this data in any client tool that can work with Parquet files and Delta files. So if you wanted to do some work with Azure Databricks, you can access the same files that are inside of one lake and utilize them as you see fit. The last thing that I want to walk you through is shortcuts. So remember we talked about shortcuts provide you with the ability for you to reference data sets that may be stored either in other workspaces, data sets that are external to one lake but may be stored in something like Azure Data Lake or data sets that may be stored in another cloud provider such as AWS. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to come back into my lake house here. And I'll click on the open button here so I can get back into my lake house. And then I'm going to expand the file section here. And then I'm going to create myself a new shortcut here. So the data that I want to access now is bicycle data that is currently stored inside of a Amazon S3 bucket. So if we jump over real quick to AWS, we can see my bucket here and I'm looking to get access to my data right here that is stored as daily-bike-share.csv. 
So I'm going to choose Amazon S3 and then it's going to pull up a window for me here. So I'm just going to put in my URL. I'm going to edit my connection. Then it is asking me for my access key and my secret access key. So I'm just going to come over here to my sticky note and grab this information really quick. And then paste my secret access key here and then click next. And then it is going to go out and authenticate me. And then it should provide me with access to my short. Oh, well, first we need to give it a shortcut name here. So let me just call this AWS S3 bucket. That's good enough for now. And then I will create this shortcut here. So as we look over here, now we can see that my S3 bucket appears within one lake as if the data is natively stored here. However, it's important to note that no data is physically copied out of AWS and into Microsoft One Lake. The shortcut option here is purely a link to point to that actual data that is still stored inside of AWS but it's going to allow us to utilize and work with this data as if it's natively stored here within Microsoft One Lake. So now I am just going to take this data and once again, I will load this to a new table and I'll just call my new tables bike data and then we'll go ahead and load this. All right, and then once that is done, we can see my new table right here. I can click on my table here, and then we can view my bicycle data here. So we have some data here for the day, month, year, season, and so on. So this is how you can utilize shortcuts so that you can reference data sets that are in external locations or data that is stored inside of a different one lake workspace. As of right now, while we are still in preview status, the only external sources that you can get to today is an ADLS Gen 2 account or an Amazon AWS S3 bucket. But over time, there will be more options that are added here. Well, guys, I hope that you now have a great understanding of what Microsoft One Lake is, how you can utilize it, and the problems that it is meant to solve for you. Before you leave, please remember to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel to help my small channel grow. Thank you, guys. Until next time, peace.